some people can just reach out to managers on Twitter and basically befriend them, if that makes sense. And uh, it, it does help with their uh, uh, securing of an internship position at Apple, uh, which is different than other companies because Hey everyone, today I'm super excited to interview someone I know who got a software engineering internship at Apple as a freshman. So first we're going to talk about how he got into computer science so early in the first place through things like hacking and cybersecurity. And then we'll finish by talking about his interview process at Apple and how he passed those interviews in his very first semester in college. But before we begin, some quick disclaimers. So everything that he says today is going to be purely his own opinion. He's not representing Apple in any way. He's also not going to be violating any NDAs or revealing any secrets, you know, stuff like that. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. All right, cool. So do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, my name is Yusuf. I'm a second year computer science student at the University of Toronto, and I'm uh, happy to talk about my experiences today. All right, so to get into Apple as a freshman, I'm sure you had to start coding pretty early on in high school. So when exactly did you realize that you wanted to study computer science? Yeah, so it started actually before high school, um, around the age of 10 or 11. That's when I really started getting into computers. Um, you know, I'd, I'd use my parents' computer to like watch YouTube, uh, and play flash games and flash games especially are what really got me interested in like the um, the coding part um, so that's when I started looking into ways to like cheat in the games um, I began messing around with uh, something called cheat engine if you guys heard of it it's like uh, this uh, memory editing tool um, I didn't know that at the time but I, I just followed a bunch of tutorials where they told you what buttons to press and uh, suddenly you have like a thousand coins in a game. Um, so that's like the first time I really felt like a, a hacker. Um, then like around ninth grade, that's where I took my first uh, programming class in C++. And uh, that's where I really fell in love with programming. Uh, after that, I got down and dirty with, the, with code and I uh, started writing video game cheats. Um, one popular game you might have heard of, Counter-Strike. <laughs> Alongside this journey, um, I also taught myself JavaScript and uh, I got really interested in um, web and computer security. And uh, I went into something called um, uh, bug bounties. And it's basically where um, companies have this um, array of different uh, products and services that they have that are eligible for security researchers to uh, test and find um, security holes. And if you end up finding one, you can report it directly to the company. And uh, uh, if they deem it worthy enough, they can reward you. So I ended up uh, doing a few, and actually one of them was in Counter-Strike. Um, and once I started making like actual money, it really hit. Um, uh, I did not realize uh, how much of a difference uh, I could be making and that's what like it fueled a fire in, in myself to actually take this seriously. Could you also talk about the kinds of CS concepts you learned like up to and including your first semester in college? Yeah so with my past experience my first and second year in terms of like the CS courses were not too bad. Um, the theoretical and math courses were a bit tough uh, because uh, we didn't go that in depth in high school. And I wasn't really too into learning math on the side. I did know how to build a few um, uh, like uh, small applications in different languages. So um, that really helped. Uh, and I also had like a pretty decent understanding of like low level concepts from my uh, game modification days, um, like memory management, um, understanding assembler code and like common security pitfalls um that you find with uh compiled software gotcha and one last thing before we talk about your interview experience so what did your resume look like when you applied to apple yeah so my resume had um, four experiences and then five projects and security research type stuff um at the top i had my school and expected graduation month and year and um i did not put my gpa because it was i did not have one at the time but I've, I've kept on um, with that tradition because uh, it puts less stress on me uh, with GPA. Um, yeah, not having it really 
makes university life easier. Yeah, that's actually really smart because GPA doesn't matter as much as yeah. people think it does. Right, 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 right. Um, yeah, so for the experiences, um, uh, one of them was um, a coding camp instructor uh, and I was teaching like kids how to program. Um, I learned a lot from that experience, um, like figuring out how to condense uh, some like intensive knowledge about programming into this small package that can be understood by like a 10 year old. It really requires a lot of thought and you have to really reflect back on your understanding and like the key points uh, that matter. So I, I learned a lot in that one. And then during the same summer, I had a contracting project um, for an energy logistics company. And we just had this um, pipeline that took in um, these, these bills that had PDF in a, in a PDF format. And uh, we ran some um, character recognition and we extracted uh, keywords and uh, basically uh, automated like a manual task that was pretty grueling for the employees there. Then the third experience was an unpaid remote internship during the summer um, uh, of 11th grade. And in that one, um, I built this uh, like streaming platform kind of thing on Google Meets. Uh, so that involved like reverse engineering how Google Meets worked. And that took a while to understand. But basically, it, it would be this um, bot that would join a Google Meets call. And um, people would just have their cameras on and it would find all the camera feeds, uh, coalesce them into this one canvas. It's almost like OBS, but inside of the browser. So if you've uh, seen stuff like StreamYard does this, Restream, I think, does this. Um, and we, we take that, uh, convert it to a video file. Well, it's like a video stream and then send it to my backend. And that backend would use FFmpeg to basically broadcast it to a bunch of different streaming platforms. So like uh, LinkedIn was one of them, YouTube, Twitch. Um, and I learned a lot in there, um, but for a, an unpaid internship, it was a lot of work. Well, I mean, money doesn't um, really matter for an internship, right? So it's good that you right. learned a lot. Right, yeah, the, the, exactly. Experience, experience is where yeah, it's exactly. at. And um, yeah, and then for the fourth experience, um, I had a very heavy leadership and programming role in my high school robotics club. So um, I learned a lot of Java and computer vision and um, reverse kinematics and a bunch of weird stuff about robots that I did not even know existed in the realm of programming. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, it was it was a club that me and a friend basically uh, founded um, for our school, and we ended up winning some awards, uh, and it was really fun overall. That's awesome. You also said you had some projects on your resume, so can you talk a little bit about that? Right. So um, there were three security write-ups. Um, one of them was a bug bounty, which incidentally was for Counter Strike, and I had a pretty decent payout. Nice. Um, How much was so, it? Which uh, <laughs> it was uh i i don't think i can uh, say come on but uh yeah it was in the it was in the thousands uh, upper thousands of dollars so it was uh it was pretty nice um and then i had a hackathon project that won some awards and uh a browser extension and yeah that was that was all i had on the resume so obviously your background in CS was mainly related to like security, right? So did you mainly apply to say security engineering internships or was it more like general software engineering? Yeah, so I, I applied to a bit of both. Like I started off with a interview process with the government for a security engineering role. Um, but I once I got heard back from Apple, um, I kind of put that to the side. Um, and I just went through the, the process, uh, even though security was in mind. Uh, surprisingly though, uh, for um, the project, the team that I was on, security was uh, a big factor. And it was actually on the um, uh, job listing for that specific role. They were looking for someone with a good security background um, because of how security sensitive the project was. 
Um, it's basically the engine behind Safari. Uh, because if, if someone lets a bug pass through, it can be devastating uh, for a lot of people in the world. One thing that I realized um, through this process is that a software engineer that has very good security skills is much more valuable than your average software engineer. And the primary reason for that is the code they write um, already has uh, the security aspect thought into it. Uh, whereas your average engineer might write uh, a line of code that ends up being vulnerable and costing the company, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars in the case of certain security breaches. All right, so now let's talk about your interview process. So can you walk me through how your interviews went? Yeah, so for the interview process, it is very team dependent. So you can think of Apple as uh, a company that has a bunch of small companies inside of it. And each company has their own way of recruiting, basically. Um, so your, your resume basically gets put into the system where a bunch of managers can see um, a bunch of different applicants and they can filter them however they want. Um, so for the internship uh, position, um, my manager, for example, uh, basically put out a posting for a WebKit uh, media engineer. Uh, intern and uh, then rec the recruiter basically lines me up with um, that uh, role and if, if the manager likes it he'll send me um, an interview um, in terms of the actual interview it was made up of two parts uh, there was a technical uh, interview which was 45 minutes and then there was the behavioral uh, part uh, which is also 45 minutes so it wasn't too bad compared to other companies but it also is team dependent. So I've heard of stories where there was only one technical at Apple and they got the role. And then I've heard five to six plus. So it can really vary based off the team. So then for your specific process, like what kinds of prep helped you the most? And do you have any general tips for people interviewing with Apple? Yeah, so I can break it down into like two parts, maybe like uh, for tech, the technical uh, questionnaire. Uh, the prep for that, that I did was basically going through some of Blind 75, uh, which is a good list of uh, 75 essential leak code questions um, that basically give you a good glimpse of how most medium to easy leak code questions will look like. Because um, there is only like a certain number of patterns when it comes to leak code. And if you grasp all those, you're, you're good to go. Um, and then also Cracking the Coding Interview was a good book to just get a sense of how the whole process worked. Uh, and also watching neat code really helped. Also asking questions to past interns if you can really helped. Um, so one thing that I did not know when I applied was that uh, some people can just reach out to managers on Twitter and basically befriend them, if that makes sense. And uh, it, it does help with their uh, uh, securing of an internship position at Apple, uh, which is different than other companies because, because of how Apple is structured, uh, where each team is basically its own company that hires. So the manager has way more say on who gets to be on a team. Uh, rather with other companies, usually it's like, you need to get into the company first and then a team match happens later. Right. Uh, with Apple, it's just directly to a team. So, yeah. So did you have to DM any managers on Twitter? Yeah, I didn't. Uh, yeah. So if I knew at the time I could do that, I totally would have. But yeah. uh, sadly, sadly, I didn't. I mean, it worked uh, out, right? Uh, could you also talk about the hardest question you got in those interviews? Yeah. So the hardest question, surprisingly, is also a hard question for other companies as well, which is the why company or why Apple in our case, um, that question can throw the whole interview uh, off course if you answer it incorrectly. For example, if you're answering why Apple with like, um, you know, uh, I, I, I enjoy a software challenge. It can apply to any, any software company, right? So you're looking to answer it in a way that uh, can give more insight on how your values match the values of the company. 
You also can't say that you love Apple's products because everyone has iPhones, MacBooks, AirPods, right? So, so what did you say for the why Apple question then? Yeah, so for mine, I ended up giving a personal story about uh, privacy uh, because one of Apple's core um, uh, like fundamental values is privacy. And that's a very important aspect of my life. For example, uh, using a Facebook product, um, you know that you're going to be the end product, right? Yeah, you're a tool for them to make money through uh, marketing, uh, through Facebook ads, right? So that's one example where um, my privacy is being uh, exploited for monetary gain from a company. And Apple is one of the rare software companies that doesn't do that. Uh, so that was really important to me. Right. That's a great answer, actually. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, there you have it. That was your sis experience interviewing at Apple as a freshman. As always, hope you found this video helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I will see you next time. Peace.